My name is Jolie Bigil Kakwedewe, and uh, my, my spirit name is Umba Zitkana Wash Day, which means morning bird with good voice. And I'm an artist and co-founder of Buffalo People Arts Institute. I'm from Waipa First Nations, and my husband is Lauren Kakwedewe, and we are parents to five, five children, and we have adopted children as well. Um, so we're currently li living in Regina and um, we had planned uh, to work with Common Wheel to do a buffalo hide out at um, Ochapois and because of COVID-19 we partnered uh, with Common Wheel and um, NCCIE to, to create these, this film. We're going to be working on a buffalo hide beside our, our house uh, and possibly um, uh, on on my on on uh, one of our, either Sakame First Nation or Wiper First Nation for some portion of this of this uh, video workshop. So we're going to be we're teaching about what we know on how to scrape a buffalo hide and how to brain tan a buffalo hide. We're going to be sharing some of the tools that we're working with. We're going to be. Um, uh, talking about um, some of the protocol that we follow and um, and we're gonna do our best to share as much information as as we've been um, taught remember I want to acknowledge some of our teachers um, when my husband first started to do some of this work he he reached out to our Sundance brother Doug Hanska to to help us um, Jackie Bates Tracy George Hayes and and Terry Mosquito and of course, my my um, mother Doreen Passup, my auntie Sandra, my auntie Sandra Carter, um, some of the people who have given us some of the tools for to do this work, and um, you know, I, I I guess part of what we wanted to do is introduce why we're we're doing this work and how we got started working on buffalo hides because it was something it wasn't something that that I did um, as a young girl. And it's not something that I grew up with, and it wasn't something that was passed down, um, I guess, technically. But it's always been in my DNA and in my genes. Because um, as an urban Indigenous person growing up in the urban centers of Regina and Saskatoon, um, buffalo hide scraping hasn't come natural. When we first started to work, uh, with the hides, I, I kind of thought that it wasn't something for me. But as soon as we stretched out one of the first hides and we started to work work on it, I, I started. To, I fell in love with working with buffalo hides, and I, I wish I had known this when I was younger, when I had a had um, you know a better back because it's really hard work, and and something that that um, encouraged me to continue, even though it's really hard work, is. Because once I get on a buffalo hide and we st I start working with that buffalo hide to, to, to know that we're going to be building something from it, whether it's buffalo parflesh or, or a buffalo robe, um, you know, I anticipate it and I get excited about it because it, I almost get into a meditative state and I, it's, it helps me to think about my ancestors it helps me to think about those grandmothers that you see in some of the older pictures working on these hides because traditionally they would stake them stake the hides into the ground and and work with the hides with some bone tools and and um, and possibly even some obsidian stones that have been chipped away to make it into a knife and I think that they they were resilient and they did this work and some of those pictures you see from you know 100 100 plus years ago they're older women they're grannies and and so technically myself i'm i'm still young so i can i should be able to do this work and that encourages me and and so i i enjoyed this work and so part of the you know why we're we're presenting through this video project is um we initially started a project with Commonweal called Respond to Racism, and we've gone to four other communities um, to to take a buffalo hide and, and share with the community, um, Indigenous and non-Indigenous um, youth, 
talking about the history of the buffalo and what happened to the buffalo and, and why this work was important to us and why it's still important to us and in the future why we still need to do it and share these teachings. So we, we did the, the projects in, in um, Estevan. Uh, we did a, a buffalo hide to carry the kettle. We, we worked on a buffalo hide um, out at Treaty Fork grounds. And um, our, we did another buffalo hide, um, oh, Grasslands. Grasslands National Park. So, so this is the, 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 um, the fifth community that we're, we're working with. And now we've, we're, we're hoping that this, this video reaches far, far wider audience. And, and we really want to encourage people to, to consider doing this work and, and, and to, because it's really helped me identify with, um, why is it so important to work with buffalo hides? Why is it so important to know about these buffalo teachings? And, and for me, it's about teaching people that not only are the buffalo, um, have the buffalo been important to us in the past, but they're important to us now because buffalo are, um, represent resilience and strength and, and maybe we don't have the buffalo the way we used to, but they're still a symbol of resilience and, and that's still deep inside of us. And so if we can tap into that, you know, that ties to our identity and who we are. And, and that's important to remember that we're buffalo people. The te oyate, the tanga oyate. You know, and, and that nobody can take that away from us. We'll always be Buffalo people. And, and so that means that we have a legacy to live up to. And because of colonization, maybe it's stalled for a little bit, but now is a time to take that back. And so with Buffalo People Arts Institute, we want to bring back these teachings to our youth, to our communities, and, and to encourage others to, to find some tools, uh, reach within your resource network and, and, and find some buffalo hides or even some buffalo and reconnect to those buffalo. Eat buffalo meat, work on buffalo hides, paint buffalo, work with buffalo parflesh, whatever you, however you can to, to find that, to reconnect with that identity as a buffalo person. It's really important now. We're all looking for our identities. And so, you know, the strangest place to, to do that right now, and I wish that we were on the land and were able to, to do this work um, on, on our First Nations to be able to share it with, with everybody. But we, we have to do it here in the city. And sometimes we have to remember that we can't always go to the land to have these ceremonies but sometimes we have to bring these these ceremonies these teachings to where we live and so when we when we shared that with commonweal and nccie we said well we'll set up the buffalo hide beside our house and uh, we'll work in our in our neighborhood in our you know in the place where we live and and we'll share these teachings as long as they get shared that's the most important thing so we're going to be scraping a buffalo hide and we're going to be sharing everything that that we know with with you we hope that you're you're able to to learn um, as much as we can and, and hopefully you'll create your own videos or you'll create get your share get your teachings as much as we can share and and that you'll carry those on and become buffalo ambassadors and pass this on to others in your community so that's our hope and um and we look forward to, to, to sharing our knowledge with you. I hope to talk to you awesome.